Welcome to the live chat for Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I'm Benjamin Walker. This is Rufus Sewell. Hi. Our director, Timur Be Beckman Tadoff. <laughs> you know, he makes me nervous. <laughs> He's so powerful and talented. <laughs> right, right, it's written there. Um, and of course, our executive producer and author, Seth Graham Smith. Let's get started. Uh, Timor, <laughs> well, first question. Uh, what is it particularly about Abraham Lincoln's life story compared to, let's say, other historical figures that make it ripe for an action vampire spin? He was tall with a, with a it's the hat. big hat and, and, yeah. and uh, dark suit. And he was, he, was, he was a very strong man. There was a, there was a legend that he could hold the axe, axe as, a, right. as a woodman. He can hold the axe in a stretch. And uh, in a way, though, he was the the first and probably the only true American hero. superhero, right? Sure. I mean, if you think about the things that he did, I mean, you know, we we've talked about this. Um, you know, the fact that he it, his story. We've talked about this forever, Timor. The his story is like a superhero origin story. Um, you know, he comes from disadvantage. Uh, he's surrounded by loss and death, and yet he's so strong and so, you know, determined that he picks himself up and he really trains himself. Yeah, and what was unique the, uh, that his, 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 his weapon was, uh, was his nation. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it's, his, it's very unique uh, superhero. It was not about the jumping from the roof to roof. It was about being with a nation, and nation was his weapon. Mm -hmm. Ben. Yes. So is it difficult as an actor to depict the grandeur of a legend like Abraham Lincoln whilst also making him credible as a kick ass? I don't know if it works with that accent, vampire killer. That's an interesting question, Rufus. And it's kind of along the lines of what we've been talking about. Um, what makes him fascinating and impressive is that he was a common man who pulled himself up, who was self educated, he made himself into a hero, but his origins are our origins as a, I mean, ours, as uh, citizens and as Americans and as common men and women. And then when faced with extreme and extraordinary circumstances, how do we react? And that's what makes him a hero. Rufus, what I would like to know, if you could be so kind as to ask Ben, I was curious. <laughs> What, what kind of research he did for the role. What he said. Yeah. All right. Um, actually, uh, we did a lot. I mean, we, what we're making is a period movie that happens to be about vampires. <clears throat> um, I read a few books. One book in particular um, about the melancholy of Abraham Lincoln was very helpful, kind of about his depressive and romantic nature. It, it lends itself nicely to our, our gothic tale. One of the things that I love that Timor did with the movie is everything I mean, even though the premise of the movie might sound ridiculous, everything within the movie is treated with real care and historical accuracy, from the way things look, to the way Lincoln looks and behaves, to the timeline of how things actually unfolded. And, and um, so I think that there's a strange, uh, you know, for this big action, you know, summer movie, there's also a strange amount of historical accuracy in it. Who, who, who the hell are you in this movie? <laughs> well, I play <clears throat> Adam, and um, he doesn't appear in the book, which was a shock to me when I first, I kindled the book very quickly, did a search for my character, it didn't exist, I thought, <laughs> oh, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know, I see that, 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 that it was necessary to have a central vampire who represented their aspirations, mm -hmm. who was, I mean, I like to think, you know, that he sees himself as the president of the vampires, mm -hmm. you know, that he's the counterpart. Because I, I see him, he comes across very much in the reading as a kind of cigar room deal maker of the right. vampire world, you know. Right. And um, <clears throat> to have this figure to whom all vampires led, you know, and that's why he's called Adam, because he's the original vampire, the vampire from which all other vampires came. He was around at the time of the ancients mm -hmm. and the pyramids, and you know. And for someone who represented the heart of the threat, to be met with and dealt with towards the end of the closing chapter of the film. And Tim Burton, producer, what's he like? Is he a nice guy? He's a nice guy. He, I mean, I, I really think his role is huge in the movie, we, in, and we didn't understand, because I think Seth wrote his book 
influenced by his movies, and you can you can feel it. I'm right. sure you you like. You just gotta, you've just I been didn't. ripping off Tim Burton. No, 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 no. No, that's what I'm doing now. Okay. <laughs> this, from this point forward, uh, uh, no, I mean it's interesting. I've heard you say that, and it didn't occur to me at the time, but I feel like going back and looking at the book, you can feel the influence um, of of that and other filmmakers and other writers in, in the in the book. Um, I think. Tim gave us the sort of protection to tell the story the way we wanted to tell it, which is very serious and straightforward, and never winking. I remember the first time we all met about it. We said never winking, never making a joke out of the concept, but just yeah. playing it mm -hmm. seriously. Timor, obviously your work is known for its uh, extraordinary visual style, what, and this is in 3D, very exciting. What was that like, making a movie in 3D? It's challenging. It's it's interesting because this language doesn't exist yet. There was only a few good movies, mm. and nobody really, nobody really knows what does it mean, 3D uh, movie. Right. There's no rules yet. Like you, uh, everybody. There's no classics. There's no yeah. There is no rules. It's only one really good movie, few okay movies. good good movies, and mm -hmm. that's it. And as any film language, it's just. We're just learning and we're just creating it. And it was very exciting for me to, to do it because it was a challenge and it was a, a chance to create the, our own language. And I think this movie will have this very distinct and, and unique language, 3D language. When the, because when you're fighting, uh, the distance has a, has a lot of... <laughs> sure, there's a lot to do with it. <laughs> a lot to do with it, because when somebody is Especially with an swinging axe, axe yeah, yeah. you need to know, and the audience has to, feel, has to feel the distance, and the 3D, it's only uh, technique, can help you really feel it, really feel if this axe will chop your head or not. Oh, Ben, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it strikes me out of thin air that you are a gifted comedian. <laughs> Oh, it must come out of thin air. Out of thin air. I was just thinking about how nothing. what a gifted comedian you were. You know, oh, you're you, you like improv. You you do some stage shows in New York, and and you're a funny fellow. What was it like? Fellow. What was it like, oh. sort of getting into this more serious, more uh, dramatic role? Um, well, my training is uh, classical training. I went to a theater school. Uh, Juli Juilliard, you can say. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that little pause? Uh, the, the, uh, but uh, I don't know, I think what's fascinating about Lincoln is that I think he was a funny guy. He certainly had a sense of humor, particularly when he was traveling on the circuit uh, as a lawyer and entertaining people in the uh, great storyteller, telling stories and uh, uh, making people laugh in the taverns at night. Um, I don't think this is an unfunny movie. Mm -mm. Um, but uh, it was pretty effortless because of uh, you know, the script that you wrote and Timor's direction, I mean, it, and how frightening Rufus is. I mean, it really sucks the humor right out of it when he's trying to bite your Thanks face lot, off. Rufus. It was, it was, it'll be absolutely impossible for Lincoln to survive without sense of humor. And there's so many different depictions of uh, vampires. Why, why did you pick uh, guys like Rufus to do this one? <laughs> Yeah, why don't I mean, you make so it? Why, different different why that genre? What, this genre? You know, what influenced you to? Uh, why aren't your vampires sexy? Apart from just availability. Right. Why don't they glisten <laughs> in the sun? Oh, honest. They're honest. Yeah, they're honest. Like, what was important in this in, in this movie that the uh, Abraham Lincoln has to be honest and Adam has to be honest. But they're real, and that's the, 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 as a, that's as a, a scary man. So your book, huge success, very exciting, and now the movie's coming out. Um, are you going to write a sequel? I hope so. Yeah, I, I, I um, you know, I'm fascinated with, you know, for people who read the book, uh, without saying anything about the film or the similarity of the ending or whatever, the book certainly leaves things open. And uh, there's, there's more to, you know, certainly the Henry story and there's more to perhaps the Abe story than we have told in this uh, book. Adam, Adam story. And certainly more than the Adam story because, frankly, I can invent a whole Adam story now. Exactly. From you know, so there, there is, you know, the. the and you should as well. The, I shall. <laughs> I shall. Yeah. The, the, I wouldn't dream of. I wouldn't dream of it. Um, <laughs> I, I think there. I think, you know, look. Hopefully, we're very proud of the film, and hopefully, the film does well, and everyone's clamoring for a sequel. But I, I certainly feel like there's more of the story to tell, even from just a book perspective. It's been exciting to hear all of your questions about the upcoming film. Thank you for asking. 
uh, and take care.